Open your Bibles to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. I guess we'll just call this short sermon tonight, Religious Rules. I know many of you have written to me and say, I get it. I know now know that I'm not under the law. But you still wonder if you have to live by good Christian principles. And of course, to, in order to avoid sin, you need to live by these good Christian principles and rules and regulations. Most people ask that in the question. Do I need to live by these good Christian rules and regulations in order to avoid sin? Now, if you're a Christian, you probably have your own set of rules and regulations that you think you should live by. Thou shalt go to church. I'm not saying it's wrong to go to church, so buddy, put words in my mouth. But that's what you have programmed your brain to think. In order to avoid sin, in order to live by good principles, principles rules, and regulations, Thou shalt go to church. Thou shalt volunteer for whatever in your church. Thou shalt always say yes when someone asks you to do something in the church. Thou shalt read your Bible. I'm not saying you shouldn't read your Bible. Obviously, I think anybody that listens to me long enough have figured out we're biblical detectives. Well, the B one, you have to crack it open and do some investigative work. But you develop your own thou shall do certain things in order either to avoid sin or to live by good Christian principles and rules and regulations. What you've done is invent your own flavor of religious law-filled acts with people-pleasing rules and self-imposed obligations. And if you continue with this mindset, you give yourself a good score. And of course, because you have this good score, you have this A rating, you allow to think that you are actually now closer to God. However, not so fast. Paul has something to say about that in Colossians chapter 2. Verse 20. Now I'm going to read you the NIV version. You can read the King James too. Since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, why, as though you still belong to the world, do you submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These rules which have to do with things that are all destined to perish with use are based on merely human commands and teachings. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body. But they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. I'll read you the King James also. 
It's Colossians chapter 2, verse 20 through 23. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to the ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which are all to perish with the using, after the commandments and doctrines of men, not of God, of men, which things have indeed showed a wisdom in will worship and humility and neglecting of the body. A better translation would be a punishing of the body, not in any honor to satisfy, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Man, rules can seem so religious, can't they? Rules and regulations seem so right. And to many Christians, they do. They live by them. They swear by them. They feel like those rules and regulations get them closer to God. And if they don't live by them, somehow they're subjecting themselves to sin. Or if they do not follow those rules and regulations, it's a lot easier to sin because there's no restrictions. Go to Colossians chapter 3, 15. I'll read you Colossians 3, 15. And let you decide for yourself. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. To the which also you are called in one body, and ye be thankful. What is this saying? Don't look to the rules. Don't look to the regulations. It's saying, let Christ rule in you. Let Christ rule. Well, why won't rules and regulations work for me? It seems like it's working for other Christians. Is it? Let me tell you right now, rules and regulations are for dirty people. You heard me right. They're for dirty people. Last time I checked, the blood of Jesus made me clean. I'm not dirty. Even when I sin, I'm not dirty. But the rules and regulations keep me dirty. Rules and regulations are for sinful people. We are saints, folks. We are saints. Rules are for sin addicts. For sin addicts. Rules are for people that have a sin addiction. My Bible, yours too, by the way, says that we are slaves of righteousness. That's Romans 6. We are slaves of righteousness. Why? Because God designed our new hearted being now and he surrounds us in the atmosphere of grace. So what I'm telling you tonight is don't be looking to rules and regulations As your compass. Let Jesus rule. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. To which indeed you were called in one body. In another translation. And be thankful. Stop trying to find a better way. Of how to be a Christian. You got to. Scores of churches are trying to do that to you. You got to do this, you got to do that. 
so you could be a better Christian. What they're saying is Christ in you can't do the job. Maybe Christ is not paying enough attention to you. So you've got to put the work in yourself. And let us, the self-righteous ones, mold and form you into, into what they think a Christian looks like. Tell them to take a hike. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Kick them out the door. You might have friends that are like that. Acquaintances. Even family members. I'm not saying kick them out the door. A little bit different scenario with family members. But don't let their mindset take a hold of you. Don't even entertain it. They're coming from a non scriptural New Testament scriptural. viewpoint, a wrong viewpoint, and quite frankly an evil view viewpoint. There's no nice way of saying it. They're too busy developing a tree of morality and ethics, chasing after a system of rule keeping, morality, ethics, well, that, be that began back at the Garden of Eden. <laughs> Whether we're told to avoid the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They were looking to know good from evil. So they could do good and avoid evil. I firmly believe that. How did that work out for them? And of course, if they could accomplish that, they would become more godly in their mindset. Wasn't that the sales pitch in the garden? The carrot at the end of the stick was godliness. They were suckers to that sales pitch in the garden. And they began to measure themselves by a rule or standard, period. And what was the result? It's in Genesis chapter 3. Shame. Who told you were naked? Shame was the result. They believed the lie that God was holding out on them when the truth of the matter is God was protecting them from the total disaster. That religion brought on If you think about it, the way of good, now that sounds good, right? The way of good had replaced the way of grace. Religious measuring was a death trap. 6,000 years ago, it is a death trap today. By the grace of Jesus Christ, by the grace of God, we've been transformed 
into a new hearted being that being will be eager to bear fruit the fruit that God wants in the atmosphere of grace which is the motivator by the way in that grace believe it or not through God's Holy Spirit in us inspires us to live more of an upright life. Not the way the rigid establishment forces you to act like and walk like, but know what God's grace does to you. That's why Paul was so frustrated with the Galatians who were being foolish because they were quickly abandoning grace for the alternate atmosphere. And what is that alternate atmosphere? Fleshly perfectionism. That's why Paul asked them, you were saved by the law or you were saved by faith? How do you plan to grow spiritually? By the law or by faith? Let me tell you, New Testament Christian, which we are part of, and I'll finish with this. It's supposed to be God's grace from start to finish. From start to finish. No exceptions. live in a grace atmosphere not in an atmosphere of rules and regulations brought on by religious monsters that want to destroy the liberty that you have now in Christ because what Christ did for us I choose grace from start to finish how about you? I want to hear from you.